Hello. Um, I put this on my YouTube channel in and amongst my tarot readings, but I'm not going to be doing any cards today. Um, I want to. I want to do something that's a slightly different. Um, it, essentially, I've been trying to write stuff about about all this divination and about atom and the spiritual journey with a pineal gland but I've been trying to write multiple different things very unsuccessfully I feel like the information just does not get communicated largely my my fault um, it's, it's largely because there's an immense amount of blockage with this information with me learning such a vast amount of strange and unusual things from many different areas and then really <coughs> struggling to be able to sort of put it into some sort of order where it can make sense for other people to to kind of digest and bring their experience and ideas to the table um I guess what I'm saying as well is I spend an awful lot of time in hermit mode. <laughs> That's my, this is this is where my hermit mode, this is where I'm at. Um, I don't know why I struggle to talk about this. I really don't. It definitely feels like the information, a lot of the information that I've been given when I've raised it with people, you can just see the, their minds kind of just spinning in confusion and chaos. Um, and also largely disagreeing or wanting to challenge certain concepts and, and ideas and stuff like that. Look, the, the most important thing to begin what I'm about to say, look, this will, this will may be completely gobbledygook and jarbled and I may not even post this. We'll see. Um... I wanted to, yeah, see, look, I've got, like, weird trembling. Let's clear some energy. Let's go. I want to talk as clearly and concisely as I can about, about Atom and God. Now, before I dive into this, I just want to quickly paint a broad kind of image of the type of person I am and where I come from and where I'm at now. I'll try and do this really concisely and keep it keep it simple. Um, I grew up in a non-religious background where religion, despite parts of my family believing in stuff, it was never imposed upon myself. I was always led to discover things myself and there was never any pressure to to be pushed onto any type of religion. The point being is even at a very young age, I really disliked religion. I didn't like the stories. I didn't, they just felt that they weren't steeped in any level of reality or anything that I could tangibly get a grip of. I grew up, you know, not believing in Christianity or Judaism or any of that, despite learning and, and being, you know, taught very basic, the basics about these kind of, these things. Anyway, They've never sat, sat well with me, and I've always been deeply into more into science and maths and things like that. I'm not, I'm not an expert in those areas, but those things have always sort of have led more knowledge to me, and it's because obviously, you know, one can read and digest information and put it into some, in many cases, into a physical practice and make sense of it. And especially when we're looking at the world and the universe and trying to discover the, the, the many great grand questions and the mysteries of life, what we're here to do, the planets, the solar system, the universe, all this kind of stuff. Um, I, I was careering through my life, um, had a very fortunate been very lucky in my life I've been able to have various different kind of successes in in some really cool career like industries and stuff I've done I've, I've achieved a lot of cool stuff um failed a lot as well but learned lots of lessons along the way but the point being is that for 
the majority of my life, I was going through life just with complete severance from any kind of level of spirituality. The very concept of tarot or wands or magic or ancient Egypt never really entered my head. It's not something that I was ever really into, especially with stones and crystals and stuff. I would, you know, but a few years ago, I'd balk and mock those who who engaged in this kind of stuff and would write them off with my mind analytical mind criticizing them that you know that this is all made up there is no evidence there is no physical proof etc etc i'm going to mark that and call that as ignorance of the soul there's an amazing chapter about ignorance of the soul in the hermetica but it talks ever so slightly differently about that but it's the same thing um many human beings they are ignorant of soul because they just have a complete severance from it and like that, there's a there's a physical argument for that. This isn't just an opinion based thing. Um, and this is something that I would strongly urge and encourage anyone to do. It's very easy. It's a very simple personal experiment you can do with yourself. It doesn't take long to see the difference and to begin to understand what I'm talking about. Um, but I'll dive in very quickly, and then we'll we'll come into the severance of atom, which is what this the this what the um what the main subject of this is you see how garbled i am do you, you get five minutes in my brain and my world of understanding how complicated it is for me to talk about anything it's deeply frustrating um <laughs> stay on track so about oh gosh when was it i want to say just under a couple of years ago it must be about a year and a year and a half ago i would say um during you know sort of the peak part of the pandemic obviously like everyone had a lot more time on my hands you know big life-changing things are always going to make you reassess your life and explore new things and whatnot um it, it, it was just a the whole series and one day maybe i'll go into the story a little bit more more about my kind of specific path to this to learning this information which is full of wild quite weird concepts and ideas and stuff that I wouldn't necessarily advise everyone tries because it largely involves massive doses of psychedelic drugs but it's, it's, it's not necessary um, <laughs> the point being is that um, I just I don't know I, you know I'd, I'd always been kind of fascinated with with I guess conspiracy based staff or sp- spiritual based things like Ouija boards or played with those as a kid and all that kind of stuff so I have my own opinions about them things I've always there's always been an element where I've have a level of belief in spirits shall we say but again only only operating in a very sort of ignorant from an ignorant place but the point being is that um I've always been deeply fascinated with with psychedelics and and dream states and REM and all that kind of stuff. So when I began to just study a little bit about the pineal gland, so during the pandemic when I had more time on my hands, I just I got sucked into this, this, um, this really focusing and trying to understand this tiny gland in the middle of your brain. It pains me, pains me how human beings do not even understand what this is or even understand or aware of its existence let alone its function so i'm going to do my best to sort of connect this and then explain how it connects to the severance of atom and what atom is so right in the middle of your brain and i've talked about this before is a tiny little gland it's called the pineal gland some people will call it the seat of the soul some people will call it the third eye some people will uh, represent it as a pine cone, but it's esoterically um, the pine cone and the pineal gland has been symbolic across multiple civilizations, ancient, before religion, before the Bible, before Judaism, before the Torah, before the Quran, the, um, the, the eye of Ra, eye of Horus as the Egyptians had marked it, is that is the pineal gland. And if you take a human brain and you slice it right perfectly down the middle and you open it up, you will see the eye of Horus and the eye of Ra represented on the left and the right hemisphere of the brain. And right in the middle with that tiny little dot 
is the pineal gland. And it's called the third eye. And the reason why they called it the third eye is because it possesses uh, tiny little crystals and a retina that that is designed, as we know, to receive light. Well, the the thing that pricked my, you know, my, my curiosity more than anything is like, well, hang on a minute. If you've got something that's designed to receive light in the middle of your brain, and yet your brain is encased in a skull <laughs> with there's no visible light inside, how does that work? Like, we know it's in there, yeah? But what light is it receiving if there's no light in there? There's no light in your brain. There's electricity. So there is an element of, some element of light. I mean, look, we I don't want to get into the, the, the complicated going off on track, but the point being is that it it doesn't make sense why there would be a a a, a gland that that basically is for all intents and purposes has the ability to see and to and is connected to your brain. Now, when I started when I started looking into this quickly, I was like, well, how do I not know? Well, how have I not known about this third eye? How do I connect to it? How do I see with it? We then kind of, I, I, you know, need to be a genius to figure it out, but having been at a similar period or, you know, similar points in my life, experimented with psychedelics, with DMT, even with cannabis, cannabis is just, they're all part of the same kind of thing. Um, you, you quit, and when you, when you begin to study this and understand about the pineal gland, you quickly learn that the pineal gland is responsible for creating some very powerful chemicals in the brain three very good feel-good chemicals serotonin melatonin and dmt natural dmt if, if if you haven't taken dmt and i'm not for one minute advocating that you do um you can just research and, and just speak to people that have taken it and they and just listen to their experiences dmt is a very powerful drug a very powerful hallucinogenic very powerful psychedelic it will, if you're in the throes of it, depending on the dosage, it will create intense psychedelic geometric patterns. You will see sometimes spirits and goddess images, or you can see all manner of um, of incredible imagery. Um, I've written a couple of pieces about some of my experiences now. I'll try and dig them out and try and get all this stuff consolidated so that it all begins to link up. But the point being, DMT is a really powerful hallucinogenic. Well they know from studying through MRIs is that when, when a human being is born and upon death, so life and death at the, ta- at the beginning and the tail end of their mortal existence, the human brain is flooded with DMT at birth and it's flooded with DMT at the end. And that really is to sort of prepare you and usher you into reality and also to take you out. So the pineal gland creates natural DMT but most people can't just do it at will. It's 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 because they they have no connection to it. Well, how can this be? Like, what, what? How do we not know about this? How is everyone not? You know, how do we not have more people tapped into this or or able to explore more into this? Well, and this is where it gets a little bit conspiracy. So I just want to like just let's just put our tinfoil hat on for one minute and just you know let's just let's just discuss things. Let's not say what's right, what's wrong. It doesn't really matter. You have to do this yourself. So, the pi- most people's pineal gland is calcified. So when they've started doing studies and they've started looking at people's brains and they look at the pineal gland, it has this hard coat. It's like a yeah, it's like a calcified like it, and that that clearly blocks it and blocks and prevents it from operating how it should. Well, some studies, and again, this is out. This is out for the jury. This is this, you know, there's there's people will argue all day long about this, but. Um, it's my personal belief that um, I began to decalcify my pineal glands and began to open my third eye when I stopped taking fluoride, which meant I just changed my brand of toothpaste. Um, most toothpaste, every major brand out there, dentists recommend, all contains fluoride. There's very little scientific evidence to prove that fluoride is actually beneficial to the human body. It is a natural element, like all things, you know, it's nat- it's out there. But it in it is only supposed to be taken in very tiny, minuscule dosages. And the reason is, if you look on the back of a tube of toothpaste, and you see, it says, if children ingest too much toothpaste, or if they shouldn't really ingest any, or even adults, then you need to go and seek medical attention. It's a poison. It is used as a pest control. And you can look that up. You can go fact check that. That's a fact. 
the point being is that I, it's my belief, and since I started decalcifying my pineal gland, I will never take fluoride, and I filter all my water. I'm very hyper-conscious about what I put in my body to a degree. I'm not perfect. I will have wine and, and beer and things like that, but all those things should be avoided to be honest. But the point being is that your what you eat and what you drink does have a massive effect on your pineal gland. So taking fluoride out of your diet, for me, when I began to do that, it didn't happen like immediately, but within a couple of weeks, I just started to feel a bit more balanced. It sounds weird. I just started to feel a little bit more kind of like grounded and less emotional. Like, you know, if anyone's ever like kicked caffeine or done a sugar ban on themselves and, you know, you, 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 you find that your days are just much more balanced. You don't have these emotional shifts. Well, the pineal gland is a similar thing, but it's not necessarily so reactive on your emotions. It's just... For me, it's it just begins to open up your your ability to to see and view the world through a different lens. That's the only way I can describe it. Sounds weird. It sounds made up, but it's for me. It's when I started doing that, it opened up a floodgate of a world and all of this stuff, all this information, all the books I read and. And, the, and the, what I'm about to discuss as well. And of course, look, this is just my interpretation and my belief and viewpoint. You, I would always suggest, you know, I'm not here to tell you I'm right, you're wrong. Every human being is their own individual soul. You go believe what you want to believe. Just do whatever it is you want to do. The only, the only, the only laws that we should be abiding truly are the universal laws, <laughs> um, which is don't hurt other souls very simple so believe what you want just don't go attacking someone for their belief let them believe what they want to believe as long as they're not hurting you leave them well alone it's very simple it's not it's not a difficult concept to get your head around so this is as a good as a good finishing point to end that little stint about and I, i'm gonna do some I, if people want me to talk with more detail about the pineal gland and my journey with it i'm more than happy to drill into that so drop me comments let me know if you want me to go much more deeper into that and all the different kind of things you can eat and drink and do in terms to help you decalcify your pineal gland um roll forward the more the more the more my pineal gland and my third eye began to open the more connected i became with with strange divination and again, this isn't to say that, I, that what I'm a washing machine's going. I should have thought about that. Doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so apologies for the noise. Um, yeah, we're going to go through this. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to let it distract me. He says. So, decalcifying the pineal gland changed my life. Decalcifying my own pineal gland changed my life. And this is this is where this is where things are going to take a strange twist and turn. So I went from being someone who was very anti spirituality, anti religion, to being really sort of looking deeper into these things and just going, "Hang on a minute, let's not just say I know that you know that my basis of my reality is correct. Let's really challenge it. Let's really look at look at all these different things. You know, like is the Holy Bible." The, the one true religion is it the Quran is it the Torah like who got it right like how much in the Bible is true for who wrote the Bible where did it come from all of these kind of things where does the Hebrew language come from all of this stuff like you can you know, I don't think you need to be a scholar and go into like insane dedicate your life to each of these subjects people do but for me when you commit so much of your not your life to one thing you do shut off the, op the options of many other things so for me I like to sort of study as uh, like bits and pieces of many different things and sort of try and sort of pull them together and collate them this is where it gets unpopular i'm not here to offend anyone i offend a lot of people anyway my name is th massacre all my art my stuff on twitter and online is very antagonistic it's all done deliberate all a deliberate act if you still can't see that and you th then well it doesn't matter. This isn't about... This isn't me to talk about this. Let's talk about Am. Um. Everything that we're taught, everything that you are born... In, when you were born into this world, into the 20th, 21st century, you were born into a reality that has been constructed around you. It's not... That is, that is 
it's just I just want to really keep this simple for a second. It basically means that by and large, your beliefs will depend on what your parents believed. Your beliefs will de- and your your education will depend on what school you went to and what books you were were taught and were shown to read and what you were taught and told to study. Okay, very simple concept. My argument is this: if we are creating human beings and societies with the majority of society completely disconnected from a very special part of the brain that is basically being controlled or destroyed, you technically are going to have a dissension of spirituality. So if the pineal gland is the seat of the soul and what the ancient Hindus believed and what a lot of esoteric teachings say and what the Egyptians believed, that this particular tiny pea-sized gland is another eye that is a light receptor and connects to the gods or to God, to Atom. If that is being deliberately severed or destroyed, this is just a big if, you then have an entire society that where their entire beliefs and their entire... Um, uh, their entire understanding of the of reality and the world is constructed by the very thing that has bound them. I'm always banging on about Plato's allegory to cave. It's not the only philosophy that I know, but it's the most poignant one in in order to get people to break out of the this this reality before they can begin to explore other realms. If your pineal gland is calcified, everything I'm talking about sits outside of your reality and therefore becomes almost impossible for you to grasp and get hold of. Now that's not for one minute saying that, that you know that I'm right, you're wrong, or vice versa. It's just saying that we're different. Okay, so if you if, if you're listening to this and you have not your your pineal gland is calcified or you you're only just learning about it, what I'm saying to you is that I have a very different connection with reality to you. Not necessarily better. I mean, I would argue that it is because my world is full of magic and wonder and and so many crazy things. It's beautiful. I love life. I love life more than anyone can imagine. Trust me. I live in a. I live. I literally live like Harry Potter. It's like living in Elden Ring. People play those video games. Fuck that. I live it. I live the weird, wondrous magic. When I go into the spirit realms and I meditate, it's crazy stuff. Anyway. You can validate me in the spirit world. Go do it. (laughs) Shouldn't be so arrogant. The point being, again, when you've got society that has been severed from atom, it is no wonder that we live in a world full of people in low vibrational states. And for the best part, most people are all operating with low vibrational intentions, lust of the flesh, yeah, sinful behavior bad karmic habits inner demons all just working again and again and again and it's largely because they have absolutely zero connection to something else now a religious person a christian a uh, whatever a jew a muslim will say yeah but i've got connection with god and that my god i believe this and whatnot it's not to say they don't they absolutely do what i'm about to say is very unpopular and it is what it is it's my belief but I'm not here to be like kind of like to condemn anyone. It's just let's just I'm just here to just discuss options and theories. So here's my theory. At the very very beginning, at the very very ultimate beginning of time, beginning of the universe, the ancient Egyptians believed that Atom was the sole creator of all, and it was spelled A T U M. This is this this very concept in Hermeticism and what the ancient what the Egyptian gods believed and what the pharaohs worked towards and what the priests and the high priestesses the high priests and the high priestesses all geared towards was this connection to Atom. That's it. Now we're going back to the very the, the absolute very beginning and the story goes that Atom, the single creator of all breathed into existence air and water and he called air was shu and water was tefna two elements 
a brother and sister or as I would deem twins and that they then communed and had children now like the, 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 the I just want to roll back a tiny little bit there's various different variations on this some people say that Atom spat Shu and Tefna into existence. Some people say he masturbated them into existence. It doesn't really matter. The truth is, is that Atom, the, well, not the truth, the, 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 the origins of the story, what's important is that Atom created Shu and Tefna. And then Shu and Tefna had two children and they created Nut and Geb, which is sky and earth. So you've got air, water, sky and earth, four children of Atom. Now, I would argue and say that you know, effectively, this is where Adam and Eve comes from. The very first creations of man or humanity or whatever. But what I'm talking, these are primarily elements, okay? But human beings possess all these elements. We are made of earth. We are made of air. We are made of water, okay? We're made of all these, all the, all the, these core elements. The Egyptians then, the, the story goes is that Atom, so, so Atom created Shu and Tefna, who and Nut, Nut and Geb, the sky and the earth, effectively created the cosmos. And the cosmos was named Destiny. And the story goes that Atom fell in love with Destiny and they bore children. And these were physical um, entities that were that we commonly now know as the planets. So Atom and the create the cosmos and together they created the planets, the solar system. Human beings now looking at this as just, let's just take that very basic concept, okay? Which is different to what, what the Holy Scriptures say to a degree, but they, there's, there's an awful lot of similarities. I'm not going to start Bible quoting and stuff. It's just not, not relevant with this very concept human beings modern human modern man and I, i'm going to use the word man i mean men and women right humanity okay but modern let me let me stick with humanity modern humans are, are unable to conceptualize this and we would argue and interpret it as a big bang as we we need some sort of physical tangible thing that we can mark or chalk or write or record in order to accept it as truth but the reality is is that the ancients knew something really important that we still have not understood the ancient Egyptians believed that the human soul should should be in charge of the human mind, not the human mind in charge of the human soul. And the reason is, is because they knew that we only use 10% of our brains. They knew that there are elements of our brain which connect on multiple different levels. Higher conscious levels of thought, dream states, I mean, hallucinogenic trances, whatever you want to, whatever you want to, However, you want to break it down. There's a thousand different types of divination, which all fall under that, or under what I'm talking about here. But the point being is that they operated their entire existence from the point of a soul, not the point of a human brain. Which means that they, ana they instead of analytically uh, critiquing their beliefs, they went with the, what they felt. And this is very much like kind of where I try and operate to my best ability to my best ability where I try and try and operate from which means that I try not to analyze the universe or, or try not to act too much and react on the universe too much on critical analytical thinking because mind is the, your your human mind is literally an encasement it's a trap it is Plato's allegory the cave And I talk about this, and I just feel like people just don't understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> people probably think he doesn't know what he's talking about. Let me, let me. I need to break this down a bit deeper. When Atom created the planets, okay, he created the seven observable planets, the gods. He gave each one of those planets an energy, a power. Venus being love, Mercury being wisdom, Mars being struggle, Saturn being 
abundance and death and all of these things. Now, all the planets possess multiple different energies, but the, just, let's just not think about them as, pl- as physical, spherical planets for the moment. Let's just think about them as energies and gods are energies. The tide is affected by the moon. Science still doesn't know exactly how and why. Okay? There's so many things that are unexplainable, but it is. It is deeply connected. Women's menstrual cycles deeply affected by the moon. Just watch children and human, particularly children, or, or, or um, even just watch other human beings around the times of full moons and new moons. Their entire behaviours change. So the, the moon itself as a, as a celestial being has an energy that no matter what, no matter which way you look at it, it has an effect. The sun does too. And the reason why we know this is if you spend time in the sun, it gives you an energy, right? That's not, we don't need to get all mystical and weird about this. It's just true. If we connect it, when we connect to these things, they have an energy that affects our mental and our, our kind of being, our balance, okay? The minute you start using your brain, you begin to analytically critique and go, well, how is that? You know, we start getting into the realms of how is this possible? How does it physically work? I'm just, I, I think the best way to kind of sort of draw into this is just to suspend your own reality for a second. There's no harm in dreaming, okay? But this is firmly what I believe. I believe that each of the planets has its own energy, okay? And each one of those energies... Um, is responsible for sustaining life on this beautiful planet, on Earth. Earth was Atom's most precious creation. It's where he created all of the creeping things, all of the creatures, the sea, the, 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 the rocks, the views, the sunsets, everything. Everything that's been manifested on Earth, which is constantly evolving and constantly in manifestation, is an entire constant co-creation of Atom. Now the trick where, where, where do human beings come into it? Well, the Egyptians believed that, this is where my washing machine's gonna really go noisy. But look, I'm not cutting this, I'm in, a fl- I'm in a flow of it. I can't stop now, as I'll never get this information out. Again, I apologize. <laughs> Atom, in order, Atom loved the gods as his children so much and that, but he really wanted something. He wanted to be able to experience his creation. And so the ancient Egyptians believed that Atom then created a human soul and sent, those, sent the souls down to earth to tend earth, to look, ar- to look after earth, to protect earth. But most importantly as well, so that Atom and the gods could experience this creation through man kind through humanity so that's why it was written in the Kometica and all religions use this as well is that they it is written that man or humanity or human beings are a reflection of God in this case atom and I'm gonna I'm gonna go into I'm gonna talk very specifically about why God and atom are two different things so the Egyptians so so he sent the souls down to earth to tend and the human souls were sent down to earth but it was quickly realized that they had no physical encasement to be able to physically attend to the plants and the animals and to keep sustaining creation so atom gave man a body he gave human men and women a physical being a physical shell in order to experience now he also knew that in order to, he knew that the gods, the planets, because they had so much powerful energy that they could be ruthless with, and also jealous of Earth being the most kind of beautiful of the planets. Atom knew that there, there would be times in the future where the gods would fight or war or try and draw more energy from one another. Um, so Atom, Atom made the gods each gift one of their their powers to human to human beings to human souls so he in the hermetic it was written that the atom then commanded the gods to gift man or human humanity each one of their energies each one each of their powers the gods were not happy with this and they argued with atom and said if we gift man 
our powers. Man is an inquisitive creature. He will want to know where that where where they. The, oh, sorry, I keep saying he, but it's just because it's how it's written in the Hermetica. So I don't I don't mean to like be offensive. It's not. This isn't about. This isn't about men or women being any different at all whatsoever. I, 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 man is is humanity. Okay. Man, man is not of gender. Human souls are both genders. I'll talk about that maybe in another video. So don't get all. Don't attack me because I'm saying man when I man is humanity. I can't ex, cannot express that enough. The very concept of human beings being split gendered is that is down to your religions and poor information over the past two thousand years. Back on track. So the gods argued with Atom and they they didn't want to do it. So Atom knew that the gods were not going to gift human souls the, these energies. In order to appease the gods, Atom then came to an agreement and said, I will create a mechanism, a complex star system that prevents man from using all those energies and connecting to the heaven, to connecting to heaven and becoming a god on earth. That, that's effectively what the gods didn't want. They didn't want man, mankind, humanity, having that power because effectively if a human being was able to connect to all that energy they could potentially co-create and man well they could they could it could just become too powerful and it could become a god on earth and create destruction again suspend reality <laughs> suspend your reality for a moment so atom created the zodiac and the Zodiac is a very complex, ever-changing system of energies that locks man in a physical mortal prison on this earth. It literally prevents man from reaching above the firmament. So before I go into the firmament, I just need to explain this, the, the seven realms of, of heaven or hell, however you want to decide it. The seven observable planets, and we'll talk about the greater, grander universe in a minute, but the seven observable planets circle the Earth, moving around, creating and shifting energies. And if you look into astrology and your birth chart and all that kind of stuff, you can begin to kind of understand a little bit how human beings are also different, how the time you're born, depending on where the planets are placed, will pretty much dictate your life. So that is why I'm always saying it's written in the stars. So your very existence and, pos and being, your right now, it was individually created as a human soul. Now the seven planets, all with their energies, controlling part of this, so uh, as being placed within the zodiac and part of this mechanism, prevented man from ascending and basically becoming a true enlightened being straight off the bat. It basically meant that in order for man to ascend, man would need to divinely connect all these energies in order to ascend to heaven. The very concept of heaven and hell is a construction of man. It was never really written about with the, with the very, the very old ancient Egyptian understanding of of what happens when you die. The old understanding is that a human soul, that all human souls are immortal. A human soul is immortal. A human soul, when a body dies, the soul will live on, and it will head up into the spirit realms and depending on its behavior and actions on earth will dictate its next stage and its next journey but the time you're alive on this planet is a blip in the duration of your soul's existence most human many human souls are millions and billions of years old we were there at the very beginning of creation we just don't remember or have access to it that information is greatly severed Each of the planets can be almost kind of 
understood as a different realm of heaven or hell, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> Saturn being the furthest observable planet, the coldest part of the solar system, the furthest point, is the lowest realm of hell. People aren't going to want to hear that, but it's true. Saturn is literally on the, the outskirts of the solar system, and it's the furthest connection to light source, which is our star, the sun. It's a dying planet. Some people, I mean, there's many theories about Saturn and what it represents and it's a failed star and all that kind of stuff. The point being is that each one of these planets is your seven chakras. They are all connected in one shape or form of another. And the Egyptians used to worship the gods. They worshipped the planets. They just gave them different names. Okay, Mercury, Venus, all of that is all is modern names. Okay, so Mercury, the Egyptians was the, the was the god Thoth. So human souls knew that by connecting to these planets and offering, praying, worshipping to them, they were able to tap into those energies. Now, what I think many of them, many human beings have failed to understand is that when you're connected and you're operating within the level of mind, you're not connecting to source, which is atom. So... The Egyptians, when the very, very early part, we have no documentation, therefore I have no evidence, <laughs> only my ideas and theories. The very belief is that when we go back to Shu and Tefna and Nut and Geb, those were the purest early creations of Atom. And they were the, 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 our closest connection to Source. The dissension of mankind started then. It literally just declined and declined and declined and has been on a, on a descent ever since. And the reason is, is because as man has, from the very first human being that was on this earth, whether you believe they're a caveman or an Egyptian or a Sumerian, it doesn't matter, or an Atlantean, <laughs> Every single existence, every single soul, every single birth and death, every single impact on this earth through shared stories, knowledge, wisdom, writing, education, it has all been fettered by human mind. Me talking and doing this video right now is being fettered by human mind. I, it's almost impossible for me to just put my soul on, this t on a slab in front of you and show it to you. I would want to do that if I could. This is the closest I can get to explaining this. So since the very, very oldest, early days of our oldest ancestors, who we all derive from, because the ancient Egyptians believed in reincarnation. They believe when you die, you... You're judged and then, depending on your actions, you're reincarnated back down to Earth. Back on Earth. My theories and concepts are... Uh, it changes, but because obviously I don't like to lock into anything, I'm always looking to discover and trying to learn different ideas and theories. My belief is that if, as a human being, you, depending on your behavior and your attitude and most importantly your your actual connection with source if you remain ignorant of the soul and you don't have any connection with soul and let's just take it a step further and say that you engage in extremely depraved low vibrational behaviors when you die you will not be reincarnated as another human being you may be reincarnated as an animal and thus the descent of man continues making way for fresher souls that have a better opportunity to exist on this planet and bring something to it. Atom is not going to allow demonic, 
low vibrational people to continue to continue to continue their existence, damaging his creation. If you go against the creation of God, I'm talking about people playing God, <laughs> okay? People who are fettering with science, fettering with humanity, DNA, all that kind of stuff. Those people will not reincarnate again. Many of them will be destroyed. So you look at the story of Mark and the wane of the soul, wane of the heart. It's the same thing for me. The wane of the heart dictates where the soul goes, basically. You're going to find a lot of very horrible people become worms in the ground. And then eventually they'll just be... And the, the under, the under, all those creatures that crawl through the dirt and the earth is technically is the underworld. That's what hell is. Being a maggot or an earthworm or something underneath the ground in, the, the, in complete darkness, surrounded by critters and creatures and crawling things, that is a concept of demonic hell right there. So hell, hell exists beneath your feet. If, if you're a creature, <laughs> for human beings, it's a different concept. The point being is that you have a very small opportunity in your life to awaken to knowledge like this, and then to go, okay, well, how can I, how can I expand my conscious thought to ensure that. I ascend and I don't descend. Now, my point being is that if we imagine that when the, the Egypt... In fact, yeah, look, this is what I really wanted to kind of talk about. So I'm just going to talk about the sliding scale of humanity. So if we go from source creation of atom and the planets and the very early concepts of what the ancients believed, as humanity has used its mind more and we've, you know, we've just delved more and more into practicalities and we've severed our soul, we use our mind more than our soul, the actual behaviour of us and our benefits to this planet has declined. Is that not true? Every like, and uh, let's let's get real about this. Like, even if you're say someone who's a, I don't know. Let's 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 take anyone. Let's say you're you're a ground bacon scientist inventing medicine or whatever, all based in science. At some cost and level, there is a constant. There, you know, whatever you're creating is is not going to be in its purest natural form. You are manipulating, trying to make people live longer, you're trying to intervene with nature, as it were, but also, more importantly, you are, um, you are using mind and not soul. So we are, we're not, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an illusion that this is a, this is, this is a, this is a pathway to, to good. I don't know if that makes sense to people. The point being is that everything that mankind is humans are creating has done nothing but decline nature. Look at the world we've created. We're tapping the resources. We're digging and drilling for gold and oil just to consume stuff for ourselves, for our own gains, to with very little benefit to the cosmos. That is a dissension. And especially when you factor in that science becomes the religion and maths and that people only believe in those things and they don't believe in spirituality, you've severed, you've severed from Atom. Now I believe, and this is, this is where it gets ever slightly controversial and I'm in constant disagreement with those that I channel information through and I, I'm, I'm uncertain myself, but it's very possible that the, very, that the ancient Egyptians a civilization that reigned for many thousand years that is still argued over, and no one truly knows how long that civilization lasted. But it was the one of the longest reigning civilizations, are honor without a doubt. With the dissension of the Egyptian civilization, by the time the ancient Egyptians got to the tail end of their dynasties, their practices and their magic and their connection with God was being severed. They lost a connection with the gods that they once had prayed and worshipped. Now, I'm not for one minute wanting to start to get into a discussion about, oh, these people were barbaric with human sacrifice and all that. There's no doubt about it that those practices were engaged in many civilizations, ancient and all over. What I'm trying to say is that at the very, very beginning, at the very purest form, that was not the done thing. 
human beings were in a pure divine connection with Adam. They knew the laws. They knew the will of God, will of Adam. They knew that the gods were, were no more than a mechanism of energy to tap into. They were a resource, not a defined thing to be worshipped. Well, the ancient Egyptians, if they were connected to source and connected to Atom, they had an understanding that was a direct connection to the co-creator, to the, to the original source of all. What happened though was that the ancient Egyptians lost their connection to Atom and the gods reigned supreme. They began to worship the gods more and more and they were severed from Atom. Now, to the point where the ancient, where Egypt declined and declined with its morals, its behaviours, its all of its value of money and value of human life and value of animal life, etc., etc. By the time we get to the point where the Greeks and the Romans come into play, and you know there was a very definite war against trying to take Egypt down this great civilization the Greeks and the Romans just adopted the gods that the the, the Egyptians worshipped at that time think about this we're talking about if we're talking about the the Egyptian gods at the very latter stages the last let's say 1000 years of their reign even if we break it into a few hundred years 600 years it doesn't matter at that point ancient Egypt had become Hellenistic it was worshipping all the wrong things. It had valued gold and money and slavery over anything else. I'm not for one minute suggesting that the pyramids were built by slaves. I don't want to get into that argument or discussion. But there's no doubt about it in my mind that this great civilization, the ancient Egyptians, I believe, are the very truest source, are the very truest point of where Atom, the connection with Atom was, descended into... Uh, descended into Hellenistic practices and, and understandings of, of the world. And, that, and that's largely because they too had become severed from truth. They too had, their pineal glands had been, you know, corrupted. Their minds had taken over their souls. And, you know, the Greeks and the Romans did nothing but analyse with mind the great philosophers, Socrates, Plato, etc., Confucius, Marcus Aurelius, all these people did nothing but use their brain thinking that they were more intelligent than Atom and Source. They paved the way for more science and more maths and more severance from Atom. The severance of Atom has been going on for thousands of years. It, was already, it happened before the Greeks and the Romans took over. So the Greeks and the Romans through their very ignorance of this esoteric truth of where all the gods and the planets came from was just never discussed. It was just never understood. And if it was understood, which is there is a possibility that some people, you know, you could argue, no, have access to that information, it was certainly kept from the masses because the most powerful way you can control a nation or you can remain in power which is what I believe the Greeks and the Romans emulated from the Egyptians I mean the Egyptians were able to keep law and order for thousands of years don't get me wrong they had wars and fights but they nearly always won using magic um, and you can read the stories of that it's amazing um, the, the point being is that the Romans and the Greeks, despite thinking that they were high level, and even now we look back at their architecture and their sculptures and their paintings and the art from, from yesteryears or from these periods with, with absolute awe and wonderment and I guess we revere them so much. The truth is, is that we're, you're revering and you're admiring uh, man-made constructions and ideas and beliefs and science and religions that were completely born from a low vibrational Hellenistic period of time. There is one thing that I will say because I don't just want to demonize all of this stuff. I would say that the, the Torah, the Bible and, and the Quran all have fundamental concepts that are direct imitations of what the ancient Egyptians believed. 
particularly when it comes to Osiris and Osiris um, the, being the rebirth, very similar story to Jesus. Um, it, it's remarkable how many things are similar. Adam and Eve, Shu, Tefna, night, day. The, the, the very stories of creation are all very similar and they all emulate, they all retell the same stories of old, including the floods and everything. So most of what is read in these, these holy scriptures is just interpretations of old stories and knowledge that has been passed down and down through long periods of time. And unfortunately for us, the, the language of hieroglyphs, which is so argued over and so misunderstood, even today they still can't translate these damn things. There is a massive severance from truth. Now look, is it possible that the ancient Egyptians were absolutely barking mad and they were primitive or greedy or whatever it is? Like, yeah, absolutely. But I do believe that there's an element of, again, it's that slow descent, slow dissension of humanity from, from, the, from source. Now, I don't think that that, that you know, like we, we just draw one line graph and say that every single human being is on a decline. I don't for one minute believe that. So sorry about the washing machine. It is what it is. I just come back from a trip of um, to the seaside with my 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 family and my children. There's so much washing to do because the sand and everything. But there are loads of human souls which connect with source and connect with God. Whether it whether it be through the Bible or the Quran or the Torah, it doesn't really matter. If someone's individual connection with source is there, real for them, then that's beautiful. I would never step in, I would never suggest that they, they do anything different. You know, you, you have to do what you want to do. But I truly do firmly believe that a decalcified pineal gland, once you start that path and once you read up scientifically, study and analyze what this gland and what this part of your brain does, and if you begin to then place its understanding within the realms of possibilities of what the ancients used to believe and what how they used to operate their lives, particularly guided from soul and not mind, I truly firmly believe that that repairs any severance from atom. And it can become a much more personal, truthful, beautiful way to live your life. And I'll footnote this thing as well, this very confusing, complicated video. And, I, and maybe now, this is now confirmation to me and myself and me, and this making an awful lot of, 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 um, of understanding and making a lot of sense to me about why I struggle to write this. I, I, I just can't write this stuff down. It just does not work for me. Hence why, hence why I just had to do this long goblin video that has now been going on for 57 minutes. So bless you for listening to, to those who have listened to all of this. And please ask questions and comment. I will, I will drill into this as much as I can in future videos, if people want. The... The concept of living from, from soul and not mind is very strange. It really does kind of alienate you with people and make people look at you in a very strange way. I get a lot of weird, weird kind of questions and stuff from friends and family. And when I talk about these things, you know, it all seems very weird and wonderful and magical. But the, the fundamental thing to understand is that there is a level of, for me, that, that for me, it's, even if all this information, what I've said is false, if, there's a big if, it doesn't hurt to explore and find out for yourself. That's the first thing. The second thing is understanding understanding your life from and operating your life from the point of soul and not mind and operating in the laws and the the, the, the belief systems of atom instantly will change core aspects of your life for the better, in my humble opinion, and what those aspects are. Firstly, most importantly, no fear. If you believe in atom and you connect to atom and you connect through your pineal gland and you, through deep 
I'll go into practices in other videos. I'm not going to reveal all that now. We just don't have time. If you connect to Atom and you understand Atom and you this does become a foundation of belief that you operate from soul, not mind. You lose all concept of fear because you understand that you're an immortal soul. That this existence on this earth is very temporary and very brief. It also then means that all of your actions and your behaviours are shifted into an, into an alliance which is much more compatible with nature and a true, um, uh, let's just say, a more pious, pure um, bridge and connection with reality. Which basically means that, you, I guess what I'm saying is that you don't engage in low vibrational activities or behaviours. And even when you do, you feel the negativity and the weight of it so much more that it, it steers you away from, 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 from lying, from being deceitful, from being unkind from being angry or operating from from anger or lust or all of those things all of the seven deadly sins you just become hypersensitive to it because you you believe you you believe and understand that atom is in fact there's one there's one more important thing i don't know why i didn't talk about this at the beginning this might screw up the whole video this is tail in it the the most important thing for me about atom and the understanding of atom i don't know why i keep doing this with my fingers I'm drawing the in, the symbol of infinity for some weird reason. Um, it's because atom is infinite. Um, is the is the understand that atom? So the Egyptians believe that atom is one. Atom is all. Atom is in everything. Everything is made of atom. Like the entire cosmos is made of atom. God, i.e., atom, is in everything and is everywhere and is in is in us and is in not is our brain is made of atom and our blood is made of atom and the air is made of atom. You know, roll forwards two thousand years, you know, post Christ, and science is drilling into the mechanics of elements to discover that every single object is made of what atoms. The ancient Egyptians knew that. That's, that is not a coincidence. For me, that single understanding that when you think about it, it basically means that this entire wand is made entirely of atoms. So it is made of the very fabric, the very... And atoms, what are atoms? They are just non... They are immortal, limitless, um, endless... Uh, um, particles of energy that's what an atom is atoms don't die they will forever just vibrate and you, we can change the, the atoms can atoms are always the same but the the, the form and the position that they are in geometric geometrically will change the consistency whether something is solid or a liquid or a gas but atoms are in everything so everything is connected so this wand is connected to me and I am connected to the air, to the ground. It's all ultimately connected. So you watching this now, there is a very physical connection between us. Even if you can't see it, it is a physical connection through atoms, through the device, through every single compound and element that is connected between me and my voice and you. And when you go into, if you want to go into like kind of layers of this, you know, you, you begin to understand that uh, the atoms, you know, being everything that we're producing is just energy, and that is contained, and it will continue. It will live on. Everything you do and say lives on and has an impact on the world, even if it's a tiny amount. But yeah, the, so 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 atom, the belief that you know, and this is where other religions struggle, you know, to to sort of scientifically explain it, is it makes a lot more logical sense than when you say that God is everywhere. God sees all and hears all and it feels all. Because the ancient Egyptians believed that Atom, i.e. God, was in everything. The gods being the planets and Atom being the soul god, the soul creator of oneness. I haven't even, I've realised now that I'm finishing up this, I've realised there are so many aspects of everything that I've talked about that I could drill in deeper and deeper. But again, this is all ideas, thoughts, concepts. It's definitely something where I would say that from a point of being that 
the more I look into this and the more I understand, the more at peace I become, the happier I become, the more productive I become. <laughs> maybe not in writing and doing art, but yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, if any of this information connects with you or you're interested in learning more, do let me know because I would like, I might do more videos about this. I'm hyper conscious that this stuff that I'm talking about, firstly, I'm not even, there's lots of stuff that I'm not permitted to talk about. There are several things that I will never speak of because it's just not, you have to, it has to be discovered by this, by the individual. The, there, there are rules to this and there are layers to this and all the people that talk about astral projection and soul connections and all that kind of stuff, there are many, many layers to this many many layers and just because you've been studying something for 20 30 years doesn't mean you've got a you, you've got a head start doesn't mean you're you're going to win the race there there is there is there is that, that's why i don't necessarily like gurus and things like that because you know if they really wanted to gift you the information they could do it in five minutes but they won't and they don't <laughs> there's certain things that cannot be just explained they have to be experienced on a personal soul level so there's there's that and you, and you, you, you can read the Hermetica and figure that out yourself. It's not difficult. But there are, there are lots of things that I, that I, that I will drill into and talk in, as, in more depth about. This is the kind of, this is the sort of information that I'm being guided to deliver, to put out there. So maybe this, the way this, like I didn't write down any notes, I should maybe start preparing these things, have it a little bit more organised, maybe structure things a bit better. For me, this is just me kind of just unfurling the torrent of concepts and ideas that are just flickering through my brain. I was trying to make sense of this. Very vast and complex. I don't even know if I'm doing a good job. Let me know if I am. Let me know if this is causing more confusion. Let me know if this is making sense. Let me know if you want me to talk more areas about this. Let me know if you want me to talk specifically about um, about maybe delve into the different gods and Thoth being being one that I I can I might start with Thoth. I might start with a journey of how I connected with Thoth. That's quite a cool one. Um, I don't know whether this is working or not. All I know is I've just got to do what I've got to do. I hope this information has been helpful to someone. And if this does resonate and does connect, definitely follow my tarot because it's all connected. Check out some of my art as well. It's not the weird, crazy stuff, conspiracy stuff, but check out some of my art. I'm going to start bringing and creating more writing and art and more videos like this that hopefully all tie together to begin to sort of paint a picture of 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 a one potential uh, not one, but many different ways and paths where other human souls can begin to connect with their soul or this connect to spirituality in a healthier, more meaningful way without it ending up down some dark realms where things get a little bit Hellenistic. Um, yeah, I'm out.